By doing this genetic analysis, you can determine directly the genes at the tissue matching loci. So when we transplant organs, typically the immune system focuses on a very small number of genes and they use those genes to either see the tissue as self or to reject it as foreign. And so when we do bone marrow transplants, for instance, we are matching those genes. And typically we worry about three genes from the mother and three genes from the father. And for a bone marrow match, you need to have six out of six. The process of parthenogenesis, if we remember, can duplicate a DNA, a, a chromosomal piece. And so if they've duplicated the place where the tissue matching genes are located, now instead of having six different genes, you actually have three in duplicate. So it's much easier to match people in the population if you're only worried about making three identical rather than six identical. So for the first time, this raises the prospect that you could, with a relatively small number of master cell lines, selected for the fact that they're only carrying the three tissue matching genes, that you could make a bank of those and have all the major common sets of three. And in fact, it's been modeled in a paper in Lancet in the last couple of years that you would, with as few as 10 of these cell lines, be able to have a tissue match productively for up to 80% of the population. So I think the implications for imagining a future where we would create master banks of embryonic stem cells and have an off-the-shelf type of therapy, off-the-shelf cell products, rather than the highly cumbersome, highly labor-intensive, highly expensive, individualized patient-specific therapy, I think has been, been advanced by the idea that you can couple parthenogenesis and genetic screening to identify those cell lines that are going to be most, most helpful.